Hey guys, it's Mike here. You are watching In The Mix and I'm back with another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys some sort of FL Studio hacks, tips, tricks that I use and they save me an awful lot of time and hopefully they'll save you a lot of time and hassle too. A few of them you may have heard of before, so what I've done is I've made a little list and I've put it in the description with a load of timestamps. So if I'm rambling on about something and you know everything about it already, simply skip ahead and stay happy and keep moving with the tutorial. So let's just get straight into it. My first tip would be to keep the mixer in this extra large mode. So when you open up FL Studio, it might be in this sort of compact or this wide mode. But if you just click here and select extra large, it gives you the widest possible track uh, view that you can get. And it really makes it easy to stay on top of things. You have much more control over the faders because they're all bigger. And you can see exactly which effects are turned on and which are turned off on each track. So if I just play out a little bit of the song, you can see that I can quickly pull up all the effects just by right clicking down on these buttons and I can sort of see which effects are acting and which are not. Just like that. And it just makes stuff really easy. Uh, you can very, very easily see what's going on. I find that when it's on compact mode, I feel like I'm just sort of wasting space because I can't see everything quite as well, even on a big screen, and I don't feel that I have as much control over what's going on. So I like to keep it on extra large mode all the time. Another thing that I do is to keep the, the track inspector on the left hand side. So if you click just here, you can go into view and you can have track inspector on the left hand side. And what this does is it moves this module from the right hand side to the left. And I just prefer it there because my workflow stuff tends to be on the left hand side of the screen. So I like to keep everything together where I want it. The next point is making presets and this is either on instruments, on the mixer track or on effect uh, plugins and I'll show you what I mean by this. Uh, in this case I have a lead here and it's created on Serum and I'm just going to sort of show you what it sounds like. And if you've heard our song White Lies, this lead sort of uh, sits on top of the drop and sort of leads the song through and I quite liked it. Brad and I spent quite a long time making it so after we made it, we thought, well, we could just save it. So we've given it a name. Obviously inside Serum, you can just uh, save a preset by clicking this button here. But if you're not inside this synth or you're inside absolutely any effect in FL Studio, you can click this button up at the top here and you can just click save preset as. So you click that, it'll take you here. You can just save it. I'm just gonna call it lead. And then if you want it again in the future, when you next load up your instrument, you can just open that preset and your settings will just be sitting there for you. You can also do this for any sort of effect plugin. So if I just go back to the bridge and I sort of play out a little bit of this guitar art. Now without effects, it sounds like this. And I might say that I really, really liked that reverb setting. So again, I could just go to the reverb and click save preset as and then next time you use that pre uh, next time you use that reverb you can just load up the preset you use for the guitar and it'll sound exactly the same going a little bit further than this you can actually create presets for an entire mixer channel i have one cello playing the main melody and i have another playing a harmony and currently they're sent to exactly the same mixer track as you'll see here But suppose I wanted to send the harmony to a different track, but I wanted it to have very similar processing. All I have to do is right click on the track where the cello is being sent. In this case, I've sent the top cello to track 21. So I just click file and I could save the mixer track state and then load it up on the next one. Or I can actually just left click and drag and now I can drop this wherever I like. So I'm just going to drop it onto this empty insert that happens to be sitting here. Now it's named it exactly the same, but I'm just going to call it cello harmony and I'm going to send this cello harmony to that track, 22. Now I wanted it to be the same, but I wanted the harmony to have maybe an awful lot more reverb and be a little bit louder. And this time you can see that the harmony sounds very different. It's much more washed out. Um, and that sort of thing is useful. I tend to use that quite a lot on vocals. Uh, the projects we do, I end up usually doubling or tripling Brad's vocals. We have octaves lower and stuff like that. So often we'll take the same vocal processing just by saving a preset channel and then we'll tweak everything to make it fit. But it gives us a really good starting point so that we can keep working fast and we don't have to sort of stall in the project whilst just loading plugin after plugin. It can get a little bit tedious that way. The next tip would be making unique patterns or making unique uh, little wave files in your project. 
And what this lets you do is add a lot of variation and you can also test new ideas without having to go back on ideas you've already uh, sort of um, chosen. So sometimes you have a drum pattern and you want to save it, but you also want to try a drum pattern that's almost exactly the same, but maybe just slightly different. And you don't want to change the one you've got, you just want to make a copy of it and make it unique. So in this case, I have a kick and a snare pattern that's called kick snare verse. And it just sounds a little bit like this. I'll just play the drum bass on its own just so that you can hear it really easily. Now I like that pattern, but I might want to do something a little bit more interesting, but I still want to keep that pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on it, left click, copy down here. Then I'm going to click on this little piano icon in the corner, this little keys icon, and I'm going to click make unique. And what this does is it, it saves the one up here, so it still sounds the same. But it makes a copy. So now if I change this copy, this original one will stay exactly the same. And it's amazing how few people actually use this technique. Uh, lots of people don't know this exists and they just build their patterns from scratch again, which takes an awful long time. So if I open up the channel rack again, I can just press F6 or I can click up there. The kick and the snare are already in there, but I might just want to change the pattern a little bit. I don't know, maybe make it something a little bit more interesting. Maybe something just like that, but I can still just mute it and check the other one. And in this case, maybe I just like the first pattern I've, I've created, but it, there's no uh, danger in creating these unique patterns because they don't affect what you've done in the past. This is true for MIDI information for chords you've put in. Maybe you've put in one melody and you just want to copy the melody, uh, mute the other one, just try a new melody. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. You can scrap it. You can just go back to the first melody you've got. It saves you a lot of time. You don't need to keep putting in the same chords and the same melodies over again. You can just get right into the experimental stuff and not worry about it, not worry about losing the data you've already created. On uh, losing data, that's probably the next point. So you can create project folders for your project. So if you click up to options and go into file settings, you go into project and you can create a data folder for the project. So in this case, mine's set up on the C drive, it's called white lies and then it's inside a folder called project. And that means that all the information for this project is saved there. It's not saved into anywhere else on my computer. And it means that if I want to go back and get stems or get any WAV files that I've printed out, they'll all be in there. And I don't need to worry about deleting stuff from other locations or ever losing data. Uh, if I zip up my projects, make them to zip, zip to loop packages, I'll just save them into there again. And I know that everything to do with this fold, this project is saved there. If I ever want to share this project with a colleague or another producer, I can just send them that folder on my computer and they will have everything to do with this project. All the VSTs, all the WAV files, all the MIDI information, it will all be saved in there. Uh, when I started, I wasn't doing this and I actually lost some data because it was sort of saving it into a sort of global directory in my computer and it just sort of messed things around a little bit. It wasn't fun, but hopefully you guys won't fall into that trap. The next tip involves some sort of buggy plugins. So sometimes you open up a plugin and in this case, I'm just gonna open up Serum. And if you press play, Sometimes when you tweak a, a parameter, it might be like a cutoff filter, or it might be, in this case, a blend or a detune amount, uh, your project just stops playing. And then you have to go back up and press play again. And then tweak when you tweak the parameter, it stops playing again. This can be really, really annoying. It doesn't often happen in Serum, but it does happen in some sort of cheaper or free plugins that maybe weren't built quite as well. And uh, it really does just stall your workflow and it's annoying. So a hack to get around this is if you click up to the top here, in the VST wrapper settings, it's two little icons here. If you click keep focus, uh, you should only use this when you really need to, but if you click keep focus, it means that the plugin doesn't steal the keyboard shortcuts or it doesn't steal the mouse movements. So which means that your project will keep playing as you tweak parameters. So it's a much more musical way to do things or to engineer sounds because you can really hear a wide variety of uh, sound changes as you sweep these parameters. The next tip is about searching the browser. So if you click up to the top of the browser here, and I'm going to search for tambourine, I'm just going to press enter. Uh, when I first did this, when I first opened up FL Studio, I searched for a kick, but it only took me to the first uh, result, and I didn't know I had to move to the next result. I couldn't do it with the arrow keys, I couldn't click anywhere to move to the next result. But uh, if you press F3, it takes you to the next available result. So in this case, it's taken me to this one, one tambourine, the next one, go back by pressing F2, 
forward by pressing F3. And before long, you might find one that you like and then you can just drag it into your project. If you drag it into your project, it will appear down here in your um, entire uh, channel rack of all the sounds in your project. And I find that this channel rack gets really, really cluttered. So on to the next tip is making groups inside the channel rack. Uh, so if I click here, usually there's just audio all automation and then unsorted, I think. But I've created a new folder for the drums, just where all my drums are, and a new one for the instruments. And I'm going to show you how you can create your own folders. So if you're inside one of these, I'm going to make a new folder just for the drop instruments. So I'm going to take the lead, maybe these two chord stacks, I'm just going to select them and how I did that I was just sorry I was just pressing I pressed left I held shift and I just clicked on the other ones that I wanted and then if you press alt and G together it says filter group name and I'm just going to call it drop now in this uh, if I click to the top this sort of drop down list you can see that drops available now and then the instruments just involved in the drop are listed there and this really, really will help you if you've got big projects, you know, when you've got all this stuff sitting around like this, I, I don't have any time to search for what I want. If I'm looking for my guitar art or I'm looking for my lead or a vocal, I, I don't have time to search through here. This is a really, really easy way to stay organized in your projects and keep working fast. The last tip is learning how to use the Edison properly. And what I mean by this is, say you have a, a sample or a sound loaded in the Edison. I'm just going to take a new one, actually. I'm just going to click record and play a little bit of the lead. So it sounds like this. So I'm just going to cut this little bit out. And using the Edison effectively, it just speeds you up so, so much. And I'm no expert with the Edison, but there's plenty of shortcut keys inside here that will speed you up an awful lot. So for instance, if you've just got that selected, if you just press Control and Delete, it'll just trim off everything on the side so that you can use it the way you want. So in this case, I'm just going to take everything off. Just select a region using Alt, hold Alt while you... Uh, uh, scroll along, it will give you a really smooth selection. Press Control Delete, it will have the section you want. Other tips like Control A selects it. Uh, Alt, if you press Alt and the left arrow key, it will reverse the sample. And then there's other tips and tricks. So if you go into the settings down here, well, the, the tools, it's not settings. So if you click on the tools button here, there's some in here like reverbs, blurs, equalizations. Uh, noises, stuff like that, and you can you can use all of these effects uh, instead of applying VSTs to the sound. You could just press, in this case, Control R, and it will pull up a reverb. So if I press Control and R, it will pull up this reverb here, and you can preview what it sounds like with reverb on it. That was a bit huge, so I'm just going to pull down the wet level, push the dry level up again. Just going to push the wet all the way up. And then you can accept that and it will print it out with reverb on it. And now if you've got this like this, you could then take this sample out, drag it into your playlist. In this case, I'm just going to solo this, click on it and reverse it. You might end up with a cool transitional effect like this. So, you know, if you sort of trim that off, put like a smooth blending mode on it. You've just created like a really suspenseful sort of riser there and it's just from knowing a, a few Edison shortcuts and if I wanted to do that without the Edison I'd have to put my own reverb on it I'd then have to print it out and reverse it and then I'd have to probably put a little bit more reverb on it to get the tail of that reversed sound I'd have to chop that and then flip it and place it in the playlist but that was a really long series of events that wasn't really necessary whereas if you just get familiar with the Edison it will really become your friend. When we were recording vocals when we started, and we're still going to do our vocal recording uh, tutorial because so many of you guys have been requesting it, I used to just click record now, and I'd sort of just press record. Brad would sing a couple of lines. I'd select a section and drag it into the playlist and try to line it up, and it was like at least a couple of months before I realized that this button on play existed, where if you just loop a little section and then if you have on play selected, press record, it will start recording when you press play here. And then when you're finished recording, you can just drag and drop exactly lined up with where the start of this red block was and it will have your vocal perfectly in time for you. And it's just tiny little tips like that. You know, one drop down menu and one button. I didn't know this drop down menu really existed, but uh, just by knowing what on play meant, it's honestly made vocal recording like at least four or five times easier and quicker for both me and Brad. Uh, just a much more enjoyable experience. 
So sometimes with these FL Studio tips and tricks, it's just stuff that's sitting right under your nose. You've probably you've probably been staring at it in the face for a very long time. Like a lot of people will not have seen that this compact, wide, an extra large thing existed, but they'll probably be so happy when they start using it because they'll actually find a mixer setting that works for either their laptop or their computer. Maybe you've got a dual monitor setup going on. A lot of people don't know that you can put the track inspector on the left-hand side. For some people, putting the track inspector on the left-hand side would be terrible. It'd be the worst thing you could possibly do. Like Some people, that'd be so alien to them, but for me, it works. FL Studio really lets you make it your own and uh, uh, just customize it however you like. I do actually have another video just specific to FL Studio customization, so I'll probably just link that below instead of going into too much details in this video here. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it's helped you guys out and I hope you've uh, learned a few tips and tricks you didn't know. If there's any tips and tricks that you guys use every single time in all your projects and you don't think I'm using them or you look at anything I'm doing and just go on earth are you doing, you're wasting so much time, just leave a comment down below because I love criticism. I love, oh, I've said it now. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate in the comments, but um, I like uh, feedback. It helps improve. Uh, that's what we're here for. I'm not just here to teach you guys. We're here to grow this entire community and all try and learn something together. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.